Oh, God damn it. I just picked up my coffee, so, like, and there's a lot of condensation, so I was like, okay, time to grip the stick firmly, and then my thumb just slipped right off. It's me, Mario! Chat, you have to agree on what household this is. I've seen Fairly Odd Parents, Chum Chum Household, I don't know. I don't know what Chum Chum is. Is that, like, come? Chum. I'm chumming right now. That's when SpongeBob comes, it's Chum. Why is it called Saving the Frames when the action leads to those frames not existing? Whatever you want it to be. I don't think anybody wants anything to be what I want it to be. Preventing the frames from a life of pain. Oh, like, uh, Mr. Meeseeks from the hit TV show Rick and Morty. Never seen Rick and Morty, I'm just glad they invented pickles that shit. Yeah, pickles is pretty fucking sick, dude. Do I like dinosaurs? They're okay. I was not one of those kids that obsessed over dinosaurs when I was a kid. I was more into Titanic and Pokemon. I don't think I obsessed over Pokemon, though, because, like, I thought I did, but, like, then I've met people, like, who get into, like, the EVs and IVs and inject the Pokemon directly intravenously. You watched the Titanic movie, yes, but it got me very interested in its history, and I knew I knew the same amount of facts that, like, somebody who is really interested in dinosaurs would, but about the Titanic. Did you cry? I didn't cry, but one of my favorite stories, I don't think I've ever told this on stream. When I was in second grade, I had a book that was, like, a cross-section Titanic thing, and I brought it in for show and tell or whatever the, the equivalent was. His second grade jewels at the front of the class talking about the Titanic, right? I'm at the part where I'm talking about the cargo hold. So this is the cargo hold where Rose and Jack had sex, and my teacher was super fucking pissed at me for saying that in front of the class. She's just like, you have to ask me permission before you say something like that at the front of my class. I think she was so fucking freaked out that I just, second grade me, stood in front of a class full of second graders and just said sex. <laughs> and so I go, oh, okay. Can I, can I say it? <laughs> so then I tried to get her permission. She was like, no! And I was like, oh, okay, reasonable. <laughs> Have a nice day. Did you get sent to the principal? No, I didn't get sent to the principal's office. It wasn't really a thing in second grade. Second grade is still where you kind of like sit in a circle and do like finger paints and shit. Play with blocks or something. I don't know. Imagine sending an eight-year-old to the principal's office. <laughs> Go to the fucking principal's office. <laughs> you knew what segs was in second grade? I sure fucking did. Really shows how I fuck it. Why I turned out the way I did. Sexy as fuck. <sighs> <laughs> to the office in kindergarten for breaking a chair in front of someone because I couldn't color in the lines. <laughs> Let's go. In perspective, that has to be the most frustrating shit. Just stuck with the Bible. I studied the blade. While you all studied Jesus, I studied the blade. I don't think it's that weird luck. I think a big part of it is just tradition. I think there's a lot of similarities in why we hide children from sex in the same way that we have daylight savings. It's like, uh, I mean, we've just been doing this so long. I don't know. <laughs> Wow, I'm gonna bonk on every wall before I get there. Happened to the birds and the bees? I don't know, man. Just tell the kid that stepbrother, what are you doing? Sometimes Banjo when <laughs> when Banjo's in Smash, they canceled the Daylight Saving Show. I mean, even if they did that today, it would be like a hundred years too late. We haven't needed that shit for so long. Your mother's there stuck in the washing. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Step son, I'm in the washing machine. And by the way, now's a great time to tell you about the birds and the bees. Oh, no issues. Thank you so much for the raid. Make some noise. Ah! There you go. Steve, you gotta help me. I'm stuck. Is that a Minecraft sex thing? I wonder how many people in their life have jerked up to Minecraft porn. Because I sure have. Fainy, blocky cock. How many people are on the planet? Seven billion? Martiny, thank you so much for gifting a sub to Minecraft porn. Ha ha ha, all Minecraft porn is blocked. Very funny. Actually a pretty good joke. Thought Alex was a guy. I thought I thought they're all like kind of uh gender neutral. Steve Titty's bottom tech. I'm I mean, yeah. Steve has just as much of a chance being tittied as they do being cocked, okay? So don't be out here assuming anything. Ah, close. Whoa, that was cool. I don't know if I can replicate that. I was streaming Drummy and as, uh, Super Saiyan 3 Steve once. That's kind of fucking sick. Steve with mommy milkers. Fuck yeah. Steve with udders. God damn it. I feel like I always have a pro- I, I really often have a problem with getting my fucking inputs off here. The majority of the Minecraft I played was actually Xbox 360 Minecraft. I'm a dirty heathen, but like I tried Minecraft like close to when it came out. I don't know, like I feel like I didn't really enjoy it. So I was just kind of like, all right, this, this isn't for me. So I didn't try to force it or anything, but then I tried it again on Xbox. And for some reason that time I was just like, oh my God. Oh my God. I think I've talked about this. My brother played Minecraft early enough when like Notch was like somebody that you could 
could easily like message if anything was wrong. And he said he'd shit on the game <laughs> to not, which is kind of fucking cool. Wow, that was the craziest fucking BLJ of my life. My favorite thing about my brother too is that like even if he knew that Notch would be like the super popular quadruple trillionaire that he is for making Minecraft, I think he still would have shit on the game to Notch. We knew we were awesome. Yeah. How long did that last after like when did Notch just drop off? I would assume he just burnt out on it like everybody else does with anything. <laughs> I thought Notch was cool and then it became trans. Yeah, that sounds about right. I like here's the thing. I met Notch once. And he was lovely. He was he was a wonderful, lovely guy. This was after he had Twitter super fucking angry at him. He was extremely generous. Like I went to I went to one of his parties and he literally like came up to me and talked to me like he I was somebody he'd known forever. He's like, let me know if there's anything you need, anything that would make, you know, your experience better. And I was like, nah, it's great. And I think it really just comes down to the fact that some people just can't deal with Twitter. Not everyone can play that, you know? Not everyone can tweet. For a certain personality type, I think Twitter is just, some people have a hard time being able to like, really think far ahead about what they say on Twitter and what the effects that it might bring or having the capability of caring. Cause I think like, uh, Dragon Glide, baby. One sec, we fucking doing it, dude. It's back. It's fucking back, baby. We're fucking hitting it, dude. We're fucking hitting it. Let's do it. Anyway, I think Notch, is probably just one of those people that just kind of has a thought and doesn't really think about it and just tweets, you know, or did. You can't judge a person based on like one interaction or two. I had two interactions with him, technically. There's kind of a weird, sick, twisted, like underlying thing of Twitter that it, that it's pretty much the closest thing right now that is broadcasting your thoughts. Facebook, I feel like tried to do it. Your name is and then what you're doing, which is kind of fucked up if you think about that in retrospect, that even back then, your Facebook posts had to be like, Jules is and then you have blank. So you say Jules is jerking it to Minecraft porn or something like that. But like Twitter is very much just like almost rewards you for kind of stream of conscious tweeting. Because sometimes it's like the things that are like the most relatable, they get the most engaged. Basically just a hive mind. I don't think it's basically a hive mind. I think it's tailored to make you think that it's a hive, that it's your hive mind. You know, you don't really see like a whole lot of stuff just like chronologically and from all over the place. Like especially like your trending stuff is all curated. So if you just got rid of likes, retweets, replies, but you could still follow people and see what they have to say, it'd be a better place. Mm, I feel like less people would be inclined to post if they couldn't get that fucking oxytocin. And I mean, they're also getting information about you so that they could target ads and other things. Target porn, no, I wish. Uh, any fucking product that's free, you are the product it's selling. I know I'm sounding like a fucking Facebook boomer right now, or well, I, w I wish Facebook boomers would realize this, actually. I'm sounding like a conspiracy theorist on fucking GeoCities or something. You are the product that these companies are selling to ad companies and just being like, hi, we have this many people that have tweeted or have expressed interest in shake weights. <laughs> The thing with the character limit being so small before, and then, I mean, it's still kind of the case, is that I feel like it forces the act of a tweet to not be such a big deal. Not to everybody, but I feel like when you think about like, oh, I got 140 characters, I'm gonna drop something down, you know? It's not like I can make a Facebook post and I want it, want it to be perfect, so I'm gonna make it like long and big and whatever, like, it's overwhelming. A little tweet, I'm like, whatever, I'll make a little tweet. I'll tweet what I'm thinking, fuck it. It's easy. Maybe I'll get some likes for it. Maybe I'll get some retweets for it. Maybe my friends will, will reply to it. Maybe I'll start a conversation. The reason why, you know, people with ADHD seem to have such trouble with tasks is because tasks seem too big for them. They like put everything. If they wake up, they're like, oh my God, like I gotta clean this and I gotta fucking do this. The same thing with depression. Like I gotta do all these things and it's just too much because you're thinking about all of it all at once, you know? With tweeting, it's very like, oh, you just make a quick tweet. Some people will make a just a super fucking long Twitter thread, but I think that's rare. I always think about that. Like whenever I'm tweeting, I'm like, all right, you know, is this, is this information that I want to be out in the world? And I really consider like the effects of putting out that thought into the world. I hate Twitter because I can't use big words. I mean, you can, it's just the 14 year olds on the platform want to understand what they mean. Didn't read it. Also, ratio. <laughs> they'll get a ratio and then they'll all be like, 
Ooh, people with ADHD struggle with executive functioning. Some people describe ADHD as an executive functioning disorder, and like, executive functioning is the ability to break down tasks into smaller bits, smaller little bites. Need more calendars is what you're saying? If calendars don't work for you, then no. <laughs> if calendars and fucking checklists and stuff don't work for you, then stop fucking trying to make it work. There's a Reddit post about this, best Reddit post or whatever, where he had the concept of no zero days. It doesn't matter if you only do like one thing. If you always do just one thing more than you would have towards the thing that you're doing, it compounds, you know, it gets insane. It's okay to just do a little bit every single day, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. You'll be amazed at, at how far you come in just a few days, maybe even a week. It spoke to your heart. I'm glad, I, like it's not gonna work for some people because motivation and all that shit is different for everybody and some people non-existent. It's not about motivation or inspiration that's gonna get you to do the thing. It's gonna be telling yourself it's gonna suck, but it's gonna be a better than the alternative. Oh, come on. Come on! Stigma nuts. What does that mean? Do a lipa? Do a lipa this dick? 